Good morning, and thanks to CIB for inviting me to take part in this very interesting uh, Congress. I have to say that the previous speaker uh, uh, has already said many of the things that I was thinking of saying myself, but I will not, therefore. So I agree with what the previous speaker said. Anyway, I will try to, you know, outline some trends which the energy system is going to follow. I'm not going to set some deadlines, uh, but in the future, uh, the future is going, well, it lies ahead, so I cannot really talk about that line. So this is um, a picture showing uh, our partners. Um, these are the renewables in the year 2000. So they're starting to run as soon as uh, the first incentives were provided. And all the renewables seem to be uh, at the same level. And this is the renewables after 2010. We can see that some are further ahead, some others are lagging behind. There are two lanes that are empty uh, because uh, the two runners were really at the back. So not all renewables are the same, and some have got greater prospects. So this is the first teaching that we can draw from, the first lesson we can draw from this picture. And most importantly, what I think is that we are going to go towards a sort of specialization of renewables. So it, this does not mean that there's going to be technological monopoly, but there are going to be some sectors in which uh, a single technology will prevail and there will still be a role for the others. And then other sectors in which others will be prevailing. Uh, this is World Energy Outlook of 2018 saying that electricity represents 19% of final energy, final energy consumption, but because it has a higher conversion rate, with 19%, it meets 27% of useful energy demands. So we know that electric engines are much more effective than others. So this is an average. And this is what I want to start from. Uh, and I decided to think of this experiment. I thought that in 2017, there would be five full electric cars. What would the results be in this scenario? Well, the overall um, electric power demand would entail a 4.6% increase in overall demand, but it would cut 15% of the demand for gas and diesel fuel. I'm saying this in order to highlight something. I'm not saying that everywhere there is going, there are going to be electric engines, but this is just to show you the force of electric engines. And that is why the World Energy Outlook uh, is has devoted a special focus on electric engines. So this is a fact that we have to consider. So this is what would have happened in the face of, of these figures. So a lot more and a lot less. And, uh, and then there are other drivers in electrical penetration, the transition from technology 4G to 5G. I'm not going to explain this because it would take me four hours to do that. But to the left, we've got one millisecond to transmit any information read by any sensor, IoT, etc. Uh, 100 billion of mm, bits of information transmitted, but these are not the two most important things which are already leap forward, but it's the third and the fifth. The third is the number of connections per square kilometer we can have, which are one million of 
sensors, Internet of Things per square kilometer. This is going to happen next year, but this is beginning this year in the U.S. because they said that by this year, all cars must have an onboard transponder so they can use 5G. We will have this next year, but it's going to be experimental because Europe, I mean, has not thought about it yet. And this has, hasn't got to do with electric cars, but it has to do with autonomy, which is something different. Then uh, the possibility of uh, going 500 kilometers per hour on high-speed railway, which is a speed that can be reached in safety. And the last is the most important thing. We uh, who deal with biogas, e-com, com, with trade, agriculture, and tourism, we all have access to the same network, which is the internet. With 5G, we've, we will have slicing. So there are going to be slices of virtual networks devoted to a specific sector. So a sector for biomethane, a sector, a section for uh, electrical distrib dispatching and distribution, and so on and so forth. So there will be dedicated networks. And, uh, and this will increase the ability to manage things, so a dedicated network is more efficient so internet will no longer be what it is now and uh, you know you can move from one slice to the next depending on needs uh, as just as if i you know you push a button and you will do the same so in the us this is going to begin this year and it will take longer though for us so we will be in a car and this technology will tell us that just around the corner there is a lorry which is driving in the wrong direction. Well, think of that. This is not mm, something small. It's really, you know, a momentous revolution. So this uh, will lead uh, electrical demand to be met with uh, increasingly with renewable energy sources. But this will not take place. Um, it will not be used everywhere. But it will, you know, meet. Uh, uh, heat demand in buildings, it will be dominating in industrial production, and already Industry 4.0 is based on this, essentially. And uh, there will also be an increase in light mobility, because the presence of 5G and uh, autonomous um, driving, uh, there will be synergies. So, an electric car with autonomous driving does not uh, waste any time. So, this will necessarily, in the case of light vehicles, to move to um, electricity. So I'm not saying that um, all other technologies will be excluded, but in the case of light vehicles, this is the direction developments are going to take. So these are the figures of the national plan for electricity. Uh, there will be an increase in wind power and solar power. So what is going to be the role for biomethane? Well, Considering that biomethane is going to be in many different sectors, but I, I'm just f going to speak about the specific role for biomethane. This is what I see for the future. There will be a full coverage of LNG in the field of heavy transportation and sea transportation. Uh, full uh, energy coverage for farms producing BDR, contribution to the electric grid, and uh, it will also be used as raw material in the case of bio productions. So allow me to say that instruments to develop biomethane represent a strategic plan. Can I ask you a question, though? 
Um, and I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked um, on the Lune. In order to meet a uh, road transport, where we do we have? What is the output we need? Well, with the CIB, we have um, presented a position paper in Rimini on concerning our forecasts. Well, with a little bit less than five billion cubic meters of methane. 30% for road transport and 50% of sea transport can be met. Because the position paper presented in uh, Paris uh, aims at 8 billion, and one of the aspects we are going to criticize uh, that is that the only figure in this plan is 1.1, which is a ridiculous figure, quite frankly. There is no other way to uh, to define it. We're still talking about billions of cubic meter, meters. Anyway, there is enough room to cover and to exceed me the needs. So strategic plan for the development of negative carbonization in agriculture. I think that methane can be promoted only through a national level agricultural policy going in this direction and not the other way around. So this is something we should call for. I don't think that this has been provided for, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think this is the case. So measures in the plan for energy and climate for the transformation of biogas and methane, a processing of biogas and methane, look at the chapter on carbonization. You will read that agriculture is a great producer of CO2. So by Gaston Wright is not even mentioned. Um, obviously, uh, we're going to write down something about it. It's ridiculous what they are saying. Whatever is being said uh, at world level is totally uh, ignored. They just say that it produces farming CO2. An objective in the uh, energy and climate plan for the greening of natural gas. So let us go beyond 2013. I'm getting to my conclusions. There will be a growing carbon pricing over time, and we will move to 5G plus and even to 6G probably because all you need to do is increase frequency. So why is 5G revolutionary? Because it's an increase in the frequency of the system. So the highest the frequency, the more things you can transmit over time. I don't know when we're going to get there, but we will. Um, measures to accelerate the transition from the linear economy to the circular one which is going to be started in the next day, decade, because unless we develop a circular economy, there, we can never reduce consumption, because it requires an efficient use of all materials, not just energy, in order to reduce consumptions. So from the effect, efficient use of energy to the efficient use of resources, this is the goal. And without a circular economy, we cannot reach that. So this is a double role of the circular economy with the role of methane. To the right, you see technical materials, um, which we see at the end. Technical materials um, are conventional raw materials, um, traditional industry where ecological design should um, be promoted uh, in order to reuse and recover as much as possible, diminish waste, etc. Um, and then to the left, uh, you see biological products and materials. And um, this part to the left, which is static, is something that is going to grow because in bio products, uh, they're also going to be composite by products which will occupy um, a section of what we call technical materials. So the first 
wind blades uh, were made of metal. Now we've got composite materials. So we, then we're going to get to buy a composite materials. So this chunk is going to in, be increased. And wh what is going to fill it? Well, this is the role of biomethane after 2020. Increasingly, it will be used as raw material to produce biomaterials. Um, and this is something we should consider. Among the various roles of biomethane, it is the only material that keeps the content of information of biomasses. So these molecules are complex ones. So, and when I turn them into biogas, from the standpoint in term, from the standpoint of content, information content, I diminish it. And even biomethane is a step forward, but limited. If I use biomethane to recreate a complex mo molecule, I fully recover the content information of a molecule. And this also turns into energy and economic advantages. So we're not just talking about something philosophical. So long-term trends, well, they are a high reduction in consumption thanks to the circular economy and energy efficiency, reduction of waste, decarbonization process accelerated by the dissemination, well, the, the development of farming produ farms producing BTR, uh, electrification of the entire energy system in the, at the highest level with a decrease in pollution because combustion, even though it does not uh, produce particles, it still produces pollution overall. And uh, a growing part of industrial production coming from biorefineries, um, which will be using almost all of the biomethane produced. So the future of biomethane is precisely this. Thank you for your attention.